What's going on, my friends? How you doing? I'm surprised I'm able to even sit down. Because Thunder Junction has ruptured all my bowels with cancer, bro. I am fully filled with cancer. And no amount of radiation will cure it. But I will welcome the radiation just because the pain of that is less than the pain of magic lore. But before I really go off on a tangent, let's go ahead and say our hellos. Because I already shared the live stream link in the Discord. So, who do we got in here? Uh, get out of here. Alright. Um, YouTube's like, put some ads in right now. Go away. Okay. So, who do we got? What up? Jess, Gazit, Millmaster, Jester, Ned, Kensuke. Who else? Some. Juglum, Yamagoro, Joe, Felonius T. Graham, Peterson, Gerthulu, Beasley, Eng, Goddard, Stormtrooper, Bowser, DB, Plaid, Picard. Fisher, Zircon, Everyday, Potts, Lasagna, uh, Matt, Loco, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ralph, James, bum, 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 Chester, Certain, Broccoli, oh, Matt, bro, the name of this, the name of this stream is a hyperbolic joke, like, I don't have bowel cancer so just so you know this isn't meant to insult anybody who genuinely has it it's just a hyperbolic way of complaining about magic the gathering lore so i hope that your i hope that your friend's dad gets better in the last 24 hours i found out about some of my relatives having cancer and stuff so I get that kind of thing but ultimately i don't want to give the i don't you don't have to wish me well for my health i'm fine I'm fine, right? Aside from the fact that I'm the kind of person who will make these kind of titles because I think it's funny. So that's how I deal with dark stuff too. That's the way it goes, right? So thanks for the well wishes, but that's not what's going on here. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to complain about a made up, a made up uh, cowboy, cowboy land. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was it? There was one thing. Oh yeah, Zircon. I see you in here, buddy. Thanks. Thanks for the kindness that appeared on my phone earlier today. I appreciate you, man. That was nice. It made me, it made me feel good. So thanks, buddy. And also, on notes that I want to cover before I forget, Ned, I saw you in here. Yesterday, bro, was your fifth entry into the Box of Glory. So now, you're on the roll. You're on the Mega Glory, but your name's long, right? So I started, I started out big over here, and then you can see I started to run out of space. I got it. I got it in though. I got it in. I got it in. <clears throat> All right. Uh, <laughs> is this about the story? Absolutely. Absolutely. We are here to talk about the travesty that is Magic the Gathering lore in its current state. Like it is... It's so abysmal. For those of you who don't know, because either you don't watch Fantasy Geographic or you haven't seen the Fantasy Geographic video today, something happened in the middle of me making that video, basically. And uh, it just, it just kind of snapped in me where I was just like, no, no, no. Like... You know, here's the thing about Fantasy Geographic, just so you guys know, so we're all on the same page. What I tried to do over there was always deliver lore that was free of complaint. So if there was problems with the lore, I would just trim those off the edges and go, here you go, guys, here's the story without any confusing nonsense. So for example, when Ren got dropped and then hit the ground and when Ren got dropped and caught, you change that story, right? Because you can't have two different outcomes happening from one event like that you can't go ren fell and landed on the ground where nobody caught her and also got caught mid-air so i would tweak those things i'd also fix the wrong names they put in the stories and stuff like that right so i would make it work and i would not complain in any way about the lore at all at all so what up glenn what up playa what up john geiger how you doing 
So, basically, Jess, yes, you have made it into the box, bro. You are, you are definitely in there. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I don't want to get too sidetracked. But, yeah, definitely. You're on my list, bro. You're on my list. Uh, sounds like you lost your give a shit partway through. Absolutely. Absolutely. The story started out with uh, what I actually thought was kind of fun. I'm like, okay, we're starting with Nashi. I can't say that I'm particularly fond of this, but whatever. You're just cramming people into, thun into Thunder Junction. Okay. So what's he doing here? He's out in the desert. Okay. And he's trying to co coax nature to grow using magic and he's guided by Tamio. So he's literally causing plants to birth burst forth from like a single gra grain of sand. I'm like, okay, I can get behind this. Cool. He's out in the desert learning magic. Maybe he's away from everybody because he doesn't want to hurt somebody or he doesn't want people to see him fail or whatever it is. There must be something going on here. And then, well, that's the end of that part. And then he just goes back to town and... Then there's the stories like, there's a girl named Lila, but we're just going to forget about her. And actually, it's going to be Obeka. And it's like, oh, okay. All right. So Obeka is, okay. So wait. So now she is going, now she is going to the, the, the Megaplex. What, what's the Megaplex? Oh, it's this huge, gigantic building that has tons of theaters and dance houses and all. It's like, this, this world was uninhabited before we found it. And we've had it for a year. It's only been inhabited for a year. How do you have a gigantic megaplex? How? How? How do you have a gigantic mega insanoplex? Right? It's not like, oh, it was whipped up by magic because it's a bunch of tech in it. You go inside and it's got a high-tech elevator. It has a high-tech elevator with uh, you need a key card for. A fucking key card. Like, I watched you, they cloned Tyrone last night. He needed a key card to get down into the high-tech science basement. So... Lasagna <laughs> Super Chat says you could have prevented the butt cancer if you agreed to butt blaster turkey basters. By the way, since that last time you roasted me, I'm officially divorced. <laughs> well, you know what, man? Sometimes I roast people so hard that their wives leave them. What can I say? What can I say? You're Lord of the Board. Also, I guess we're, we're celebrating your divorce. So there you go. Everybody celebrate Lasagna's divorce. His woman's finally free of his oppressive awfulness. If you thought we were celebrating for you, guess again. <laughs> this is like, the, I'm like the, the worst kind of YouTuber. Are you comparing a, a made up story to bowel cancer? Yeah. Are you taking the, the, the guy's divorced wife side? Yeah. <laughs> All right, lasagna. You lord in that board, big boy. Ball Falcon, hoping for his happiness. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. So, he gets into a high-tech elevator. Why does he get into a high-tech elevator? So he can pull out some techno mumbo-jumbo and stick it to this. And I'm like, look, m m make up your fucking mind. Pick a lane, you worthless dickheads. Either everything is rickety woodbag nonsense or everybody's going to bring their own design aesthetics and we're going to have a whole bunch of different stuff on Thunder Junction. But that doesn't work, does it? So we're just going to go, all the houses are wooden and everyone wears cowboy hats. And in the story, we're going to have people go, who are wearing the cowboy hats go, these hats aren't good, I don't like them. Why are you wearing it? Who decided everyone would wear cowboy hats? Fuck you and your mother. So Nash uses his super high-tech, non-magical tech to use a high-tech, non-magical elevator to go to the top of the fucking place. And then he goes, he goes, and he's like, I'm going to put my drone in the fucking, in the vents. And then he uses the drone to see in the room. And he's like, look, the room's empty, but I can see that there's a red fucking laser trip light. Fuck you. Fuck you and your laser trip lights in Cowboy Dumbfuck Junction. And so I'm now I'm going to go into the other room and he steps over the laser trip wire but, and, and there's just the, the goo that he wants in the middle of the room. But guess what? It's an illusion or something. Abeka's a time mage, not an illusion mage, but his hand goes through it anyways. And then Abeka's like, boom, that shatters. Boom, I shattered your reality. I punch you in the face so you think about your mother. What? And then he's all like, I'm going to use a drone to steal the crap from you. Bloopity, bloopity, bloop. And she's just like, rewinds time. Whoop, comes back to her. Yeah, you're a fucking clown, buddy. You're a fucking clown. I got your shit. What about it, dickhead? And he's all like, 
Fuck you, I'm gonna leave and solder a bunch of my stupid techno drones. I'm gonna cyber a fucking techno raccoon tonight. I'm gonna solder these guys. Thanks, Obeka. Fighting with you taught me that somehow I can put magic into my drones or something. So I spent all night uploading stuff and then I had lots of magical power that worked real good. So then I went back to Obeka and Obeka doesn't notice me because they didn't mention at any point that Nashi turned himself invisible. They didn't mention ahead of time that he turned himself invisible before he went. He just goes there and he's in Obeka's room and then he's just like, oh yeah, I'm invisible. And he stopped being invisible. So they tell you he's invisible just to make him not invisible. What was the fucking point of this so then obeka's like you back for more didn't you learn and now she's like didn't you learn bitch the story's almost over so guess what here's how it's gonna work you're gonna punch at me and then i'm gonna leave with your goo and she's gonna be like no 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 because i have the ability to reverse time so i'll just reverse time and bring you back like you can't try and pretend like i have to hit you to affect time because i literally pulled this drone backwards through time so I've demonstrated my ability to rewind time. Also, she's supposed to be a fucking hard ass. She doesn't kill Nashi. Why? Why not? Why not? Haven't you learned from the non-repercussions you felt before where nothing actually happened to you and you can just keep coming back and trying again? So he comes back and he's like, I'm not invisible. And then he just fucking leaves. He just fucking leaves. Ooh, I tricked you, Obeka. And she goes... I'm going to reverse time and Nashi says, nah, we only got like two sentences left in the story. And then Tamio goes, you did it, Nashi! And Nashi's like, okay, I'm leaving Thunder Junction forever. And everybody was satisfied. What the fuck is that? Nashi is a bullshit character who originally was like a 30-year-old fucking tough guy biker who's supposed to be from Akira. At one point, Tezzeret, in his fucking dark steel body, gets shanked by Nashi. Nashi fucking shanks him in the spine, even though he has a giant dark steel body. He goes, where the fuck is my mother? What did you do? Right? That's the first time we dealt with Nashi. The next time we deal with him, he's eight years old, coming up to Kaido. What are you going to do to my mom? Don't worry, you can come with me, stupid kid. Let me give you devices and tell you how they work in a way that makes you think it'll affect the story at all, but we won't even have it fucking matter. Why do you... Like, have they not fucking heard of Chekhov's gun? If you put shit in your story, you have to use it. Fuck you and every aspect of this stupid fucking story hi i'm oko i can turn into a bird oh so when the train's about to go off the canyon mr shapeshifter what kind of flying thing did you turn into i i i jumped off sorry i thought i saw you turn into a bird in like a previous episode of this storyline wrote by the same worthless writer who wrote this so pretty sure you flew why are you jumping? Because it's cool for people to picture me rolling in the dirt. No, you know what's cool? Shit making sense and having consistency. You have fucking Kellen using vine magic. He's using vine magic now, right? Okay, he's using vine magic. Here's the thing. Oko has vine magic. Yeah, that's why Kellen has it. Yeah, genius, but here's the thing. When Oko and Kellen are standing fucking side by side and you have Kellen go, I use vine magic. Oko's vine magic is stronger. He's been using it longer. He's used it to fucking restrain planeswalkers for fuck's sakes. But nope, Oko's like, I stab him in the rib. <laughs> Bitch, you're a planeswalker with unworldly powers, bro. You can turn people into elves and shit. Pokey pokey, can't turn into a bird. Like, what am I, taking crazy pills? I'm the asshole for paying attention for knowing what the fuck is going on with the story? It's crackheaded nonsense. The entire plane is uninhabited. But we can raise hundreds of dead that don't exist to stop a fucking train. When you have Rakdos who can stop a train in a second and any fucking moron worth their salt would go, we want to stop a train. How about the big demon just grabs it and fucking tears the roof open and grabs the guy we need? No, shut up. We all got to get uh, uniforms like a guard. Wait for the guard change, right? We'll blow up a bridge. We'll raise a... I still think we should probably get Rakdos to do it, right? Like, this just seems really involved and time-consuming. He's got giant wings, and, like, he's crazy fucking strong. So why don't we just go ahead and have him... Do oh, we're not even going to mention... Oh, he's not even in the fucking story anymore? He's just around looking through the door going, What's going on? I guess I'll punch around when you need him out of the story or something. It's insane. 
It's insane. It's fucking brain dead. Why? What, we're all here for money. What money? Universal fucking currency? You got idiots jumping over fucking backwards trying to go, well, there's got to be reasons. Everybody must be being given like something that they really want. Fuck you for writing the story for them. That's not what happened. They got offered money. They got offered money. Ashiok hired Oko, who then hired Ariette, even though Ariette had already been abducted to serve Ashiok as a queen somewhere else. Somewhere else. Ashiok the Nightmare is now, instead of using her nightmares and feasting on nightmares, I own what's in the vault. Don't ask what it is because we didn't even write it into the story. What's in there? A bunch of shit we're going to try and sell you as an aftermath set, you fucking clowns. It's deranged nonsense. It's fucking idiocy. I don't know how anybody can fucking enjoy it. I don't know how you can enjoy it. A stupid techno rat goes to fucking cowboy land and goes, beep, boop, beep, I use my techno drones. Drink bleach, motherfucker. Fuck you. What is this world, bro? Everything is dumb. They're like, yo, let's make the Yuma guy. He's the Mandalorian. He's even got a little sand person. And it's like, but wait. We said that it's uninhabited. Shut up. We already painted him with a cactus guy. It can't be uninhabited. So just say it's uninhabited and have it uh, be inhabited. Fuck you. Our audience are idiots who aren't deserving of our respect. We just want to dry hump the Mandalorian while also going, he used to be a lady and now he's a dude. And there's a lady who's angry at him because the other lady she was in a relationship with. Okay, yep. This all fucking mirrors normal reality and isn't a bunch of forced in fucking bullshit. Oh, we've got quotas to hit. Fuck you. You can put this shit in and make it fucking work. You can have whatever characters you want if you write it right. Look at Mashal. Look at Marguerite from Mashal. Man, woman, at the same fucking time. And guess what? That character has depth and is fucking believable. That's the entire thing. I don't give a shit who your fucking characters are when it comes to who they're with or whatever, as long as you give them believable human characteristics, add fucking depth. Stop this two-dimensional bullshit where you pander to people where you don't fucking mean it. Wizards of the Coast is such an empty, awful company that they would, if they could get away with it, they would sell artwork in other countries of people being thrown off of roofs for having the wrong lifestyle. That's Wizards of the Coast, right? And I got to sit there and look at this fucking pointless bullshit muddying up a story. You fucking dickheads will barely pay for any words in the story in the first place. And then you got this mandated bullshit that's not even satisfying. Write a story that's satisfying. Why can't you give me a fucking gay assassin like the dude from the Borgias where he's believable and has depth? How the fuck do you keep hiring writers who can't write worse shit or do you just hamstring them to the point where they can't? What is it? What is it? Jeremy Clark. Thanks, buddy. I'm holding up okay. Ranting about magic is helping. Millmaster. Yeah. Uh, you think I'm making shit up? You think I'm making shit up? It's all, it's all of it. All of it. Uh, it's such bullshit, man. It's such bullshit. I just want to love the stories, man. I've been here forever. I've been here since the fucking Brothers War. I got all the fucking books, man. Like, I just want the story to make sense. Stop treating me like I'm an asshole, right? Stop treating me poorly because I care about the fucking characters and can remember them. Oko is infinitely more powerful than Kellen. He doesn't need Kellen to protect him. What is going on? Ashiok is insanely powerful. She could go to fucking Tarnation on her own and wipe out everybody. It's bullshit. There's no reason to have fucking air yet. She used charm magic. Don't need it. Oh, look, she can she can look through illusions. Yeah, Oko's a planeswalker and he can definitely dispel illusions. So she's not needed. Nobody is fucking needed in this stupid bullshit story. And it makes no sense why anybody is there. And it's all fucking hand waved away with, well, they're getting paid. Ariette sees Kellen and goes, if I knew you were going to be here, I would have asked for more money. What the fuck are you talking? If I had known Greg was going to be here, I would have demanded more Bitcoin, Tezzeret. Who's Greg? Bitcoin? If that sounds absurd, that's, that's the level. 
Bitcoin is actually being more specific than the fucking story did. It's fucking ridiculous. The writers are not Wizards employees at all. They are hired writers who are given a fucking word count, not paid enough to actually care and go look at the backstory, and Wizards of the Coast is fucking worthless. So they won't actually provide documentation going, here's the backstories of all the characters. They'll just give them little blurbs of whatever bullshit they're supposed to fucking pander to this time, and then let them write whatever the fuck fuck they want with whatever dumb nonsense and you got to read shit that other people think are clever where they're like i think that the halo stuff comes from a city plane like ravnica you mean capenna i don't know yeah fuck you nobody knows this is stupid this is dumb it's a fun clever interplay no it's not no it's not there's nothing clever in the writing it's awful it's awful and i hate it i fucking hate hate magic lore now i fucking hate it that's that's where we're at that's where we're at i fucking hate what magic lore has become there's nothing there there's nothing there what the fuck bro we had the throne of aldrain story that was great that was great and that was that was it that's the last time we had anything that was even okay it's so bad it's infuriating it's infuri- Why are you even fucking bothering if this is the garbage you're going to churn out? Like, 100%. At the last second, they're just going to be like, uh, you, you know you know how we have artwork of Elspeth obliterating herself with the Silex because we clearly wrote the story intending to have Elspeth destroy herself with the Silex? That's not what happens, actually. Jace activates the Silex and he's invisible. And then Elspeth runs up and stabs him. You motherfuckers need to drop it with the invisibility because you don't know when to say they're invisible or not. You say Jace is invisible and then Elspeth appears and she looks at everybody and knows exactly what's going on, except she can't see Jace because he's invisible, but that doesn't matter. She stabs him, takes the Silex that she knows is activating, goes out into the blind eternities, which encompasses the entirety of existence, and then she goes outside of existence. She leaves the Blind Eternities to go to a place that doesn't exist aside from their bullshit story. And guess what? Sarah the Dead Planeswalker from thousands of years ago is outside there, can freeze the entire multiverse, and hug wings onto Elspeth because fuck you. That's why. That's why. And I'm sure there's some fucking dipshit idiots out there like, well, actually, if they did this and based on the original stories we had... No, 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 no. You don't get any of that. You don't get any of that. What we got handed to us... That's canon. That's what they paid for, right? That's the fucking deal. You don't get to go, no, they meant this. No, fuck you. They said exactly what they meant, and it's garbage. And then they went, oh, her going out there and doing that blasted a bunch of holes in the blind eternity so planeswalkers lose their spark. But we're such clown-faced fucking idiot morons that we're like, yo, we have this artwork where, uh, like, Nahiri's breaking this thing, and we want to use it. So say her spark, say she put her spark into a stone for some reason, and then the stone broke. Why the fuck would you have a planar level event that hits everybody, takes almost everybody's planeswalker sparks away, and everybody but one planeswalker loses their spark that way, and then one loses in a way that makes no sense? Fulgore Super Chat says, Hey Mike, thanks for the hilarious rant. I've been dealing with a lot of health issues and I might end up in the hospital again, so I appreciate these streams as a pick-me-up. Looking forward to more. Hell yeah, buddy. Laughter for health, son. What? Shelton, you're not feeling good today. You lost most of your money to a ransomware scam that targeted your mom as your account was linked to hers? Bro, that's brutal. I hope that you can get it, like, unraveled. I have no idea how any of that works, but that's crazy, man. That's rough, bro. If I could, if I could, if I could drop a megaton hammer on the dickheads who did that to you, I would a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Fulgor, yeah, you're Lord of the Board. Let me put that up there. Doomblades, as I missed the first thirty minutes, what happened? This live stream is ranting about lore, bro. So I'm gonna put it up on the archive afterwards, and you can follow along with all my angry ranting because I'm not gonna go over <laughs> half an hour of my issues with this stupid 
bullshit fucking story garbage nonsense, man. It's insane. It's so stupid. Oh, God, I put Doomblade's name up there because I'm all... Hearing about what happened to Shelton's got my head rattled because that's brutal, man. That's brutal. Let's get this right. Let's get this right. Agent Fulgore! Agent Full Health. Yeah. You know what? That's what I'm doing. You're Agent Full Health now instead of Agent Full Gore. Got it? There's some mental placebo effect for you, bro. They lost the plot when they killed children in a paragraph. No, 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 no. See, Felonius T, you're so fucking far, of course, you don't even know what they did. It wasn't supposed to be children. It was supposed to be Urabrask. He was the enemy of fucking Elishnorn. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Even though he wasn't human, he was a dude. And even non-human dudes are anathema to wizards the way they were. So we had to have lady battle, lady battle, lady battle. That's why Karn got shunted to the back and it had to be Elspeth, Norn, and Sheoldred because that's how you sell stuff. You fucking demonize your own demographic like clownish fucking idiots. And go, hey guys, we're just trying to get money from BlackRock, bro. What, you mean you don't resonate with this? Fuck you, yes you do. Rosewater will tell you, you should be attracted to women who are more manly than you. Fuck you. Certain Mike says, wonder if this was the AI stuff the CEO was talking about. I wish they would just build up new characters and have a story lead that can also help the D&D story. Bro, it's not. It's not AI. This is not AI. They fucking hired a human writer who doesn't give a shit and barely gave them any money and fucking barely gave them any time and barely gave them any requirements. Like, honestly, this shit, the magic lore makes me think of when I was in fucking high school and I had this drunk science teacher and this motherfucker, all you had to do to get perfect grades on your fucking homework was literally rewrite the question as a fucking statement. So it'll be like, what's geothermal energy? Energy that's geothermal. Check, check, check. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. So why would you put in more effort? The company doesn't care and it's just a paycheck to you, right? Like if you pay me a hundred bucks to bang your mom, but I'm not really into your mom, just gonna finish up and get out of there right like what, what do i care what am i gonna give her the experience of a lifetime fuck that i got my hondo i don't give a shit about her you know that's it magic lore is about fucking your mom on the cheaps right <clears throat> so yeah it's just it's just garbage man it's just garbage it's just trash writing that it's like wow and then watching some of the comments of people who think it's great i'm like bro i wish i was fucking stupid like i wish i was fucking dumb life must be awesome for dumb people because everything seems awesome right but i have a brain that functions so when you tell me oko is a fucking powerful planeswalker who uses vines to subdue garuk and he's like shown being cunning and using magic in all kinds of different ways and then you tell me he's still a planeswalker and still has his fucking powers and then he doesn't use any of them well, fuck me for caring. Fuck me for paying attention. None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. It's like watching Superman and somebody comes up and cuts him with a knife and takes a sandwich. And it's just like, but he's infinitely stronger. He's indestructible. There is no kryptonite. How did you cut him? He's a, he's Superman. He's a man. So I cut him with a regular knife and took a sandwich. So, sorry, but he has like, what? He... What? What are you talking about? He's indestructible unless you have crypto. It's Superman, bro. I caught him. That's it. It's that level. It's that level. It's complete disregarding of anything they've... There, you wrote it. You wrote it. I paid attention to it. Why am I being punished for remembering what you told me? You can't do this Simpson shit where you just go, oh, there's just like a nothing, none of it counts from episode to episode. There is no carryover. There is no history. There is. You want us to be excited for the return of Oko, but you don't want to give us what we know about Oko at all. You just want to be dumb ab man, shows his abs out in the desert, gets all ripped up by sand and shit like he deserves, right? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Ned says, magic lore is about fucking your mom on the cheaps. <laughs> Need that on a t-shirt and sleeves. That's funny. Watch Jace will be the return of Phyrexia. Hunter, you're making a huge mistake, bro. 
you're thinking that there's going to be any follow through. No, 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 no. The next time you see Jace, he's going to be perfectly fine. And the next time they want to bring out Phyrexia, they'll just go, it came back because ah, the universe farted or something, bro. Whatever, they reset the modem. Like, there's not, they're not going to connect it at all. At all. How can you look at what's going on now and think they're going to connect anything? This is the most loose bullshit I've ever seen in my fucking life. I thought the Markov Manor story was forced garbage. But this is literally, we just want a bunch of dudes on the fucking, on the plane. On the plane. That's it. That's it. That's it. We just want them there. And we want them in cowboy hats. Can you put in a little bit of effort? Like a little bit of effort? Like how fucking hard is it? How hard is it to just add some weird strange enchantment to the plane? Where it's like, nobody lives on this plane because the plane has a very particular spirit. And people couldn't figure out how to appease it. So it instantly killed anybody who showed up. But then one day, so like people showed up and they built fucking stone buildings and all these other things. And the earth destroyed them. But then one day a dude showed up in fucking leather chaps and a cowboy hat and built a wooden house. And the next month he was still there. And word spread from this guy. Wait a minute. There's just something about this affinity for the planet where if you only wear like animal made clothing and build the fucking buildings out of the like wood of the earth specifically from that plane, the plane will accept you as a resident. And so people just started to, okay, whatever, get a cowboy hat, slap it on, trick the world, let's go. Like, how hard is it? It doesn't need to be the most amazing reason, right? But what you need is a reason any reason there's no reason there's no reason they just go the omen pass opened up and lots of people came in from capenna if a bunch of people came in from current modern day new york right are they just gonna build fucking wooden wooden like let's build victorian era wooden cities that'll burn down oh no i think we should probably use the technology we've developed also i'm wizards of the coast i'm gonna put fucking techno drones like Hi, I'm Nashi. I'm a I'm a gangster biker. I have drones. None of them have weaponry. None of them have weaponry. Not a single one. I have techno drones and key card manipulating technology. No guns. Really. <laughs> really. It's it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Artorius, Magic Lore is starting to sound like badly written fan fiction. Actually, we've reached the point where I think fan fiction would be more put together because the author of fan fiction would try would try to make a coherent story the author of this isn't they're not they're not based on the information that's pre-existing and the information within their own story how the fuck how the fuck do you show somebody reversing time in your story and then not have them reverse time the next time they're thwarted how do you not address that how do you not address that you showed us that they can reverse time like it's nothing how do you how do you fucking ignore that how do you ignore that you, because you don't care. And you just go, fuck you, moron reader. You can use your brain. I don't care. I got my paycheck. Fuck you. That's it. That's it. It's so aggravating. It's so aggravating. Certain, yeah, you know what, bro? There's another great idea. If you try and go too high tech, the spirit of the plane or some kind of magical field on the plane makes it not work, right? Right? It's ridiculous. Christopher, Jason, and Johnny don't have to have a relationship to get the furry money. Have you looked at the newest of Johnny and his brother? They look like they're fuck buddies, dude. They look like the that is like that card's made for furries. Do you want to get tag teamed by two giant lion men? Planes walking in my butthole, Johnny. I'll increase your loyalty. Like, I would love to see them do the same thing with fucking ladies that they're doing with Oko and a Johnny and everybody. Yeah, let's just go ahead and blast all over these guys' abs. Like it's fucking ridiculous it's ridiculous the goal is to use old art before hasbro goes bankrupt yup that's what they're doing they're cranking slush art they painted a bunch of cowboy hats onto shit they already had kicking around oko's in the story because they had extra oko artwork and they just went who else do we have kicking around cram them in that's it that's all they've done 
and it's garbage. Bloomborough has a better chance of working because they can just take a bunch of random animals and shove them in. All the extra animal art they have kicking around, just cram it in there, right? That's way easier to fit. The dumbest shit we're going to have to deal with there is Ral being part of the story as a fucking otter. And it's going to suck. It's going to suck. It's going to suck. Bloomborough is a set and the card's probably going to be fine. And honestly, I've realized that the lore is making it harder for me to enjoy the cards. The written stories are fucking dog shit. And a bunch of them from previous times are insanely politically manipulated. Where the story for the Brothers War we were supposed to get was Teferi going back in time and introducing magic earlier to everybody. So you have Herkel learning magic faster. You have way more magic mechs, but it doesn't change the final outcome of the battle. And Urza still detonates the Silex and time proceeds like normal so you don't have the butterfly effect going on. But instead they went... Uh uh, Teferi's a dude. So instead of Teferi going back in time, because if you watch the trailer, you can see Teferi fucking yeet a Johnny out a window while he goes yeah, 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 as he falls through the sky. It's amazing. Teferi's fucking badass. He freezes a lady who's jumping at him, trucks it into a cathedral, kicks a Johnny out a fucking window, and then goes back in time to the time of the Brothers' War. But they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. What if instead of like talking about the Brothers' War? That involves all these dudes. We focused on Kayla. Urza's fucking angry, bitter, piece of shit, cheating garbage wife. But here's the twist. We pretend like she's amazing and flawless. And all the dudes are awful, right? And then we go on top of that. She learned healing magic and fire magic before anybody. And then we can go, we fixed magic. We went back to the time of the Brothers War and a black lady did everything. And it's like, you guys want to milk our nostalgia for this old set. That's the point of this right yeah so we totally do so the first parts of the story will be about about how much this chick hates urza and hates Thomas. shut up you ugly white man oh, okay then and then what we'll do even better than that is we'll have the part where like now teferi needs to go back through time and we're gonna have sahili and she builds this amazing time machine right she goes urza sucks all the dicks and made a dangerous shitty time machine I'll make something way better. And then she makes this beautiful time machine and Teferi's like, I wish she had a lady dick so I could lick it. And like he's inside the coffin that goes along with it, looking at up all these women, crying. He's crying about it. They're the future. I'm not even making it up. I'm not even making it up. He apologizes to every woman in that story for existing one by one. And then he cries in a fucking, <laughs> the hero of self here, cries looking at them. And then Sahili, the one who disdainfully talked about Urza, you know, the one who fucking did tons and tons of time experiments with his time machine. I remember Urza's time machine exploding after a whole bunch of things happening. Uh, so what happened with Sahili's? Oh, that's right. The second time she used it, she lost a fairy through time and space and it blew the fuck up. And she's like, I'm way better than Urza. Flash forward to, we're losing him. I can't hold it together. <laughs> And then Teferi gets flung through time to Zalfir. And you're like, oh, Teferi's finally home back on Zalfir. What's going to happen here? Oh, we're just going to have him naked and emasculated. Okay. So he walks up to this caravan. Turns out the leader of the caravan's all like, fuck you, Teferi. You're a piece of garbage. I know who you are. Really? You know who Teferi is? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. And like, I'm going to call him out now. Teferi, you're garbage for what you did to us. And it's like, yeah, he worked to protect you. And the person calling him out is a murderous thief with nothing to make them sound like a good person. At no point does the story present them as a good person. It presents them as a murderous thief. And then, because she's a lady, Teferi freezes time, falls to his knees, cuts his hand on her spear, and apologizes for existing. Like, 100%. 100%. Eduardo Ramirez says, I'm enjoying drunk magic history. Wait a minute. Who's drunk MTG history? I don't drink alcohol, bro. I haven't had an alcoholic beverage in years. I'm just a maniac. This is just me. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, abs it's absolute fucking madness where we're just, it's like, bro. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If you want to make ladies amazing, you have to make them amazing. You know we can see what's going on. If you have somebody who's like the leader of a, a bandit group who's just killed all the, the fucking merchants and is posing. Like they, these bandits killed all the guards from the caravan. And they're going to butcher the merchants later and take all their goods. And we're supposed to 
listen to her have moral authority over to fairy because she doesn't have a weenus like what it's insane it's insane it's crazy it's like what it's like what is going on what is going on thankfully we've moved past that as they were oh god this isn't working and, and political opinions are turning against us the tide's turning people are getting sued who would have thought being discriminatory based on fucking gender and sex would be a problem with people yeah we were discriminating but we were being hateful to the right people we weren't oh my god staple keller onto every fucking set put him in the front no amalia wasn't gonna be the hero of the story what do you think what do you think lost caverns of islam was gonna be do you really think it was gonna be Amalia against the evil Vito man drinking blood while she freaked out and then the evil Batman god did you think that we were gonna have this sweet lovely flower no it's always the Kellen look he came running out here from some goblins or something and now Amalia's keeping him as a pet maybe uh okay don't worry though we'll be in another plane now I'm in the middle of Ixalan whoopity doop oops I'm a fucking detective over on Markov Deadhouse <sighs> it's the worst. It's the worst. Drewby's membership message said, What's up, Hatch? Keep up the rent, energy brother. Hell yeah. So, yeah. I'm glad we're past the height of this kind of uh, insanity. But the problem is. It's not like they're writing good stories now. They're still shoving dumb nonsense into it, like I said, with the stupid fucking story about Yuma. Ah, Yuma, it's hard being a lady. I should know I was one for a while. Oh no, this girl showed up and she's mad because her girlfriend's dead. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Write a, write a good story. Can you fucking do that? Is that possible? Is it fucking possible? Or it's just, uh, see how many fucking girlfriends you can... Oh, let's see if we can put 15 dudes kissing and 17 ladies scissoring in a big pile. Is that good? No, make sure, I don't know, fucking say Nickel Bolas is there or something. We need something for the key art. Nickel Bolas and, I don't know, fucking Cranko, uh, Yaris, whatever. Staple it all on. Who gives a shit? Nothing needs to make any fucking sense. Daniel, fuck that. Absolutely a fucking story add to magic. And they can fucking benefit from it. And most of the time, the cards tell the real story. And then instead of going with the story that they're fucking made like a couple years ago when they created the set, they go, how do we make this so the idiots online will be okay with it? And that's how you end up with a Capanna set where they go, it was never meant to be like a law and crime set. Really? You told us the Capanna bosses were mob bosses. They are mob bosses. Where are the police? There are no police on Capanna because people online say a cab. Like they want to call cabs or something. I just see four letters and I just know that means bad. So we don't want to upset the dumb babies online. We got to take out all the police. Wow, wizards. I was having fun playing magic until you put a policeman in the set. It's not okay. What's he going to do? Patrol the neighborhood and keep people safe? Yeah, right. He's probably killing everybody he sees because that's what every cop does. Every cop is scum because somebody in the police force might be bad. Yeah, every fucking job you work, you're judged by every single person you work with. So guess what? There's some piece of shit where you work, which means you're a piece of shit. Every single person in the world is a piece of shit. Fuck you and your reductive empty nonsense now it's like we're gonna get a crime set take out all the fucking criminals no it's only law enforcement would that be satisfying because it's not satisfying when you do it in reverse it's a bunch of people who aren't criminals going we're totally doing crime right now bro yeah i know right imagine if the police saw what we were doing police what are you talking about there's no police no who's in charge we are so we're the government yup so how's this crime? Totally not, bro. Like, what? It's so stupid. It's so fucking dumb. It's so stupid. 
it's so like this fucking current era of people going i found out that i can get attention if i act like i'm pathetic and weak oh everything bad happens to me and i have no agency or ability to influence the world mommy daddy of the universe take care of me i'm gonna go take over a park <laughs> I wish this was a dick. I wish it was a melanin-filled one. Like, fuck, dude. Come on, man. Come on. It's fucking ridiculous. I'm fucking tired of it. I've fucking had enough. I have had enough of Magic's bullshit lore. Thunder Junction has fucking broken me. It has broken me. It's... I can't even, man. I fucking can't even. But yeah, and you know what? Let's be real. Let's be very real. Magic the Gathering has an above average amount of mental fucking weaklings who can't handle reality. And they very much just want to remove anything that goes against that, right? Like, yo, yo, no, 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 this needs to go. It doesn't change reality, weakling. You not liking what I say doesn't change reality. You can fucking run away and jam your head in the sand. I don't give a fuck. But it doesn't change reality. That's where I live. So there's a bunch of disconnected crybaby clowns online, specifically in places like Twitter. And it's, it's fucking hilarious. They're posting shit like, somebody came to the game store... And they had a chicken, a bikini on their sleeves. And it's like, bro, you shouldn't be allowed in the game store. If you have a problem with like bikini sleeves to the level where you need to complain about them online, you shouldn't be allowed out of the house. You're not fit to mingle with other human beings. That's fucking pathetic. Like, yeah, if, if it's some sleeves where, oh my God, this lady's naked and she's getting banged by a demon. Yep, that's totally out, out of line. But, oh my God, that woman's wearing beach wear. Uh. Well, you can't play magic, right? Because, you know, like, oh, look at Oko and his sexualized body. Nope! I will, you know what? This is not okay. Bikini sleeves, not okay. Two dudes, two fat dudes jerking themselves off in a fucking hot tub together? They're not doing that, man. They just, you know, they just got this red flush in their face and it's definitely got that vibe, but they're totally not doing that under the water, bro. There is nothing, there is literally nothing sexual about all the fucking naked men on Bearscape. Sure, the term is sexual and sure they're naked and fucking one step from being each other's butts, but come on, man. Come on. Bikini sleeves? But like, can we get judges to ban people? Like, bro, I went to an event, multiple turns. Nobody called this guy out and tried to run him out of the store for having bikini sleeves. Can you believe this shit? Can you believe it? Like, the judges and everything? Like, why isn't everybody descending on this? This is hateful and this is how we fix the world, right? Don't use sleeves I don't like! Drink bleach, moron. DJ Long Hair says, Brokeback Junction! Thanks for the super chat, bro. Waifu sleeves, that's a war crime. Oh! Call me a fucking war criminal then, son. Call me a war criminal. Because I don't give a shit. Guess what? I like hot chicks with feminine bodies. I like fucking revealing stuff. You know why? Because I'm fucking human. And I'm a man. And I find it quite enjoyable. And I'm not going to pretend like I fucking don't. For clownish losers. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Ladies with boobs and skin showing. That's regressive. No, you're regressive, bro. Genetically. It's fucking ridiculous. Being attracted to hot ladies is normal. Guess what? The same way that a dude being attracted to a dude or a lady being attracted to a lady, that's normal. Being attracted to normal, healthy-looking ladies, that's normal, regardless. And guess what? Ladies are into ladies. They also like good-looking ladies that look nice. So... That's crazy. It's crazy. The insane mentality of removing women's agency by limiting what they can be. You can only be what I deem to be a strong, powerful woman. And if you go outside that, we have a problem. You don't get to dictate to women 
what they are, pal, just because you don't fucking like it. Some women aren't ashamed of their bodies. Some women haven't been fucking taught to act that way, and they're comfortable being who they are. So perhaps that should be celebrated. And if it makes you uncomfortable to see that at a game store, that's something wrong with you. If seeing a woman, if seeing an anime drawing of a woman in a bikini makes you uncomfortable, that's you. That's specifically you, right? A hundred percent. So that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So yeah, I mean, people are people are fucking out of their minds. If I can just yell at everybody who says what I don't like, I can make it go away. Reality doesn't go away. You can't scream away the sky, moron. Right? The sky exists. No, it doesn't. Stop it, hate monger. The sky is still there. No, I block you and all. Oh, we're going to get you out of here. The sky still exists. The sky will never go away. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, come on, man. So, yeah, the worthless, greedy ghouls at Wizards of the Coast started courting these fucking morons going, this will be good for our bottom dollar. But was it? But was it? Reaching out to the weakest, most fragile, pathetic fucks who need to see everything reflect them? Everything has to be about me because I can't identify with anything that's not me. Wow, that's fucking sad and pathetic. I can feel the human, human experience from anybody. But I guess I'm a fucking adult who's well adjusted. What are you gonna do, right? But do go on. Do go on about your stupid fucking bullshit. So, just so tiresome. So tiresome. I want a fucking story to go with my magical cards. I'm not interested in you trying to fucking re-engineer society or whatever the fuck this is. Write a good story. The truth is, you can jam whatever politics you want into a good story. Most people won't complain then. If you have a good story, most people won't complain. And I'm most people. Some people like to pretend, oh, he's a maniac and he's always... No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Show me my rants about the problems with Brothers War. Show me my rants about talking about the problems with Timestream. Show me all the problems I talked about from the past and shit, comparatively. Oh, wait. It's almost like these things weren't a fucking problem, and they were actually awesome. And the current shit is garbage. When you get in a cannon set with aliens, you can have whenever. Who cares, right? What? Nothing matters anymore. The, the lore is fucking... The lore is fucked. Wizards doesn't care anymore. They're not putting in the effort to build anything. Like, there is nothing happening in Thunder Junction that is going to make you feel more connected to any of these characters. There is no growth. And even if there was a character change, it won't carry onwards, right? Everybody who wants to see the payoff from Malcolm getting fungus in his eyes. What happened with Malcolm and the fungus in his eyes from the Myco Tyrant? Oh, the Myco Tyrant's just not a thing anymore. And that's completely d disregarded. Okay. And Ariette is here instead of being the queen of elsewhere. And like, why are all the, like Rakdos who is sleeping while Judith is trying to take over his cult is here now. And Oko got hired by Ashiok. But like, none of it, none of it makes any sense. None of it has anything to carry forward. It's all empty. It's like they're, they're giving you a bag full of styrofoam little peanut things and going, here's your, here's your dinner. And it's like, there's technically something there, but also nothing. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Bro, bro, we got a monster truck. We got a monster truck death race set coming. You think Dustmorn's going to be cool? I don't. I think it's just going to be a bunch of random crap they have kicking around. And then they'll tell you a story that doesn't make any sense because it doesn't matter. And they'll put a... Everybody was there. Okay, do you want to tell us why? Yeah, because we put him in the art. No, do you want to tell us in the fucking story? Like... Look, I'm done with it. I'm fucking done with it. I, I'm done. I'm fucking done with like Thunder Junction lore for real. For real. And I mean, in like a, in, in anything other than a totally negative sense. I am done with Thunder Junction lore. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just give you guys the fucking the early heads up. Uh, Fantasy Geographic is being put on pause. I've already recorded the video explaining it. Uh, I'm not doing any more Thunder Junction lore. I fucking refuse. 
I'm going to continue to read it and tear it apart, but I absolutely refuse to make any more videos. Me and Carly hate making war videos now. We hate it. Like after having the conversation today, it dawned on both of us. We felt this way for months at least. Wizards of the Coast has ruined the Lord to the point where somebody, I'm one of the few people who's willing to make videos and talk about it. And they fucked it up so bad that I'm not willing to do it anymore. I'm not wasting my time. There's better, I, I would rather spend my time. We've got little like cans of chubby pops and stuff. Hatcher hasn't been getting videos done when we could be making um, like blogs and vlogs and stuff, all of it. So I, I, I already put the Patreon on pause for Fantasy Geographic. The video's loaded for tomorrow. It's called, I can't do this anymore. Cause I can't, I fucking can't. It's gotten that bad. It's just aggravating. And the thing is, the next video is not going to be like anything other than just the video I put out today where I'm just going to write it shittily and not care because they don't. They don't. And I feel bad for the people who like Fantasy Geographic and want to hear the lore properly because I can't fucking do it anymore. Fisher says, I once went to play Force Will and upset someone by using a Valentina deck. Oh, bro. Valentina's got those big fat boob socks. That shit's great. Matching sleeves and playmat. I was asked to leave and never went back to that LGS. <laughs> Man, these people's heads would fucking blow up if they went to the Asian part of the world and were like, bro, everybody, like everybody's got waifu playmat sleeves cards, like everybody. That's why Wizards of the Coast put a bunch of fucking waifu cards. That's why do you think they put them into the Japanese War of the Spark, bro? So it's hilarious that over here people be like, and it's like, congratulations, whatever this is. You, let, you, you can't use those cards from a card game. And it's like... It's, she's she's dressed. Yes, but she has large chest areas. Yeah, she's she's fully dressed. You know that. Yeah, but look at the way she's sitting. <laughs> what? What? I mean, it looks to me. It looks to me like fucking Grand Archive ain't worrying about shit, right? Looks like Grand Archive's about having some fucking fun. And force a will. Force of Will knows what's up. Right? Force of Will knows what's good. Where are those other ones? Oh, there's still some over here. That's why. Like, yeah. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Not a damn thing. But fucking clownish losers would have a problem with it. Oh my god, she has a shirt with like, you can see her boobs. Oh no. No, oh, 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 it makes me uncomfortable. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, Fisher, hold on. Let me heart that super chat. Got me off on another tangent. That's right, Hunter. Obeka needed there to not use her time magic. That's how I had to say it at the end of the story. And then he got it, and Obeka decided not to use her time magic like she did before, so he won, because that's what the story required. I fucking hate it. When they introduce the crazy powers, and then it's just like, ugh. Aren't they going to use the power they used like 14 seconds ago? Nope, because then I wouldn't be able to get where I want with the story. That's not that. That's not how stories work. Fuck you. Like, you don't just get to go, I'm just going to ignore what I just wrote because it's inconvenient for me now. Hunter, you got a stockpile of Earthbind cards? I have an artist proof Earthbind. What up, Char? Sydney, you Googled Valentina for us a well, and for some reason, Sape search was off. Yeah, for some reason. That reason is you turned it off. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> You were asked to leave a store as well. You were playing a Valentina playmat and your opponent was attacked by your playmat. We played for so well at the store. I went to and nobody, nobody fucking cried about any of that bullshit. Everyone just played and had a good time. And I would laugh my ass off at anybody who said that to me in person. I'd start laughing because I'd be like, that's a great joke. And then when I realized they were serious, I'd just be like, <laughs> I'd laugh even harder. I'd be like, holy shit, you're fucking weak, man. I can't believe you can be so weak. But then also have the temerity to say this shit. Like, 
you're the biggest pussy on fucking earth. How dare you even open your mouth to me, right? Like, go fuck yourself, clown boy. You think I give a fuck that you don't like my play mat? Cry harder, ho, right? Would have gone well, too, if they went up to the guy who owns the LGS. They'd be like, hey, um, Mike said this. And he'd be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Mike only works here because he can abuse the customers. So if you think going and telling Buddy up at the front is going to do anything, he would go, yeah, that's what he does, right? Fuck you. You know why he doesn't have a problem with it? Because I'm never an asshole to somebody who doesn't fucking deserve it, for real. He said it like a joke because I know the fucking bounds and I'm a good guy. So guess what? Not a problem. We don't have to deal with that bullshit. Actually, it's funny. Somebody called him up. It was so confusing to him because he had the Liliana window cling. And like, like they called him up to call him sexist and all this stuff. And he was just like, what was that about? And I'm like, don't worry about it, bro. People are crazy on the internet right now. And just having the, the artwork that Wizard sent you now is... It's supposed to be some hateful thing. But what you got to understand is it's a bunch of losers who have no power in life. And they found that this is a way that they can get people to notice and react. So what they're trying to do is feel like they have power over you. But it's pathetic, numpty nonsense. So he's like, oh, okay. You know, like that was it. That was it. He's just like, yeah, no, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that was the end of it. Rain, can Obeka use her powers without any drawback? She can do whatever she wants. Do you think that they worry about anything at all? You're asking me a question that they, they haven't answered, but the answer is, of course not. First of all, she's a woman. Secondly, have you seen her hair? She's extra woman because she's got half of her head shaved. She's fucking badass, ultra cool woman. So, of course, she can do anything. But, yeah, yeah. Who fucking knows? I don't. All I've done is read all the lore and paid attention to everything they've ever said. Fuck me, right? I have no idea. I have no idea. But yeah, Obeka's just a card they made for a commander deck. They didn't give her any fucking backstory before now. I don't even know if she showed up before now. But when they designed the set, they were still in the make it all women, whatever. So like, make her all punchy and strong. And then we'll use that artwork showing her getting in a brawl in a regular tavern and pretend she's on the 10th floor of a techno megaplex. Okay. She's in her office. Is she Lila? What happened? What happened? So yeah, whatever, man. Playmats that the fucking game company sends out to play with or the game store sells, you complain about those? Well, what the fuck, man? If somebody makes an explicit playmat of themselves and comes out and just like, look at this. Yo, bro, I can see your dick. What the fuck is this, right? Yeah, get upset about it. Or it's like, is that your fucking wife completely naked? That's not called for, dude. What the fuck is this, right? That's the level. That's the level. Are they fucking dressed? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Are they not dressed? Not fine. It's, it's that simple. It's that fucking simple. Are they wearing clothing? Could they go out in public legally dressed in what they're dressed? Then shut the fuck up. That's it. If it wouldn't be illegal for them to walk out the fucking front door of a place in North America wearing it, shut your yap. Right? Unless, of course, you're someplace where you can just walk around with your titties out. And then it's like, yeah, hide your shit. It's not shameful, ladies. Who am I talking lady maybe one lady seeing this whatever anyways <laughs> they're not shameful they are not shameful oh it's just silliness man it's just silliness and the thing is there's only so much time effort and money that's going to be spent on lore and every inch of it that's wasted on this garbage is us getting robbed so i ain't doing no more fucking thunder junction lore nope I ain't sitting through that. It, do you know how many hours it takes to make these fucking lore videos? Do you know how much time me and Carly put into these things? That's what I thought about. We've been doing this for four years. I spent like 10% of my life making magic lore videos. And I enjoyed it at first. Like, it's always been a lot of work. And we talked about that. But we liked it at the beginning. Doing these original novels and stuff. Carly experimented with a bunch of different editing. And I experimented with a bunch of different delivery styles. Including doing Kayla's, you are a clockmaker voice. All that crap, right? So like... That was good, but slowly over time, it's turned to shit. And like, I realized that paying attention to the lore on this level is diminishing my enjoyment of playing the game and whatever else. It's making it harder to enjoy. So why am I putting all this focus on it? Because Fantasy Geographic isn't um, like, 
that's that that wasn't my dream to do magic lore videos i just loved magic lore and didn't want it to get buried because i thought it deserved more attention but i don't feel like it deserves more positive attention anymore the old stuff does but the new stuff deserves our derision wizards expects us to enjoy this fucking garbage and some people are more power to them but i can't i can't certain why not do old lore because i don't fucking care they they've killed it for me right now i need a break that's why i just need a break i need a break i don't know if when i come back i'll do old lore new lore but you know it's like the why don't you go back to the buffet and try this other shit it's like i don't even want to be at the buffet son you know what i mean so i'm looking elsewhere for lore now i've been looking at 40k lore holy fucking shit is there a bunch of cool stuff in 40k lore watching mashal the show about a dude who's like a muscle bound non-magic user in a magical world where it feels kind of goofy but the writing is tight and they put it together properly and it's rewarding and satisfying and there were so many moments where i went what that never happens with magic unless it go i'm going what that's it I just go, this doesn't make sense. And this doesn't make sense. And this doesn't make sense. So, no. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't feel like doing old lore. I don't feel it. I don't feel I don't feel positively towards magic lore at all. Like right now. Overall, in terms of thinking about making it. That hasn't changed my opinion on the old lore. I still enjoy it. But like, for real, I don't even feel like picking up a novel like reading one of my magic novels just for myself let alone make a video you know so i'm just uh like i said i put it i'm, I'm putting the shit on pause i got that i already got the video ready to put out tomorrow and the patreon's already on pause as well which admittedly that part that's that part kind of fucking sucks you know because it's like one third of my patreon money comes from fantasy geographic not that i get a ton on patreon or anything but it's like it's a third of it, and Patreon has been dwindling down, obviously, as the world's been getting tougher for people. Completely understandable. That's fine, right? But, yeah, it just kind of, it kind of blows. But at the same time, I don't, I'm, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to make the videos anymore. I'm not going to do a good job, and I'm not going to take people's Patreon money if I'm not delivering what I originally set out to deliver. So, that's not fair, right? So, that's it. That's it. It is what it is. Yeah, 40k lore is fucking amazing. It's like, okay, so all the fucking shamans and magic users of the world, they actually think they're magic users. They have fucking psychic powers, it turns out. These psychic powers leech into the immaterium, the warp that's all around everything or whatever, right? And out in deep space and shit. It, or we're not in space. It exists. It's, it's not in real space. So you've got real space and you've got the warp and you've got the chaos gods who were born into the warp and then they find all these like shamans and stuff on the emperor's homeworld and start to like consume their souls so before that all these magic users were being rebirthed over and over and over but then they realized the chaos gods were eating their souls and they weren't being reborn so there's fewer and fewer of these people and they all get together and go bro we're fucked the chaos gods are eating us what are we gonna do and somebody comes up with a crazy plan what if we all reincarnate as like one dude what if we just blast all our power into like one dude and go this is our best chance and then they go for it and like three thousand dudes go ba bam and sacrifice themselves and it creates the fucking emperor god baby and he's 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 basically got fucking full-on regeneration and like not full-on immortality but he'll never die of old age right and he has crazy regen abilities and mega ultra psychic abilities so he just goes and he's like looking around at the world and he goes okay first things first i gotta stop the chaos gods to do that i gotta get this planet in order so he goes on a war of fucking subjugation and he fucking takes down tribe after tribe until everybody on the planet is under his rule and then he starts expanding his dominion to fucking other planets and shit with space travel and then he's like yo the chaos gods can get my people they are, they are these ancient people who made a space that the chaos gods can't get into. I'm literally going to use my technology to try 
and force our way into this safe zone to keep our people alive. And then you've got him sitting there going, I, okay, in the meantime, until we get there, I'm going to focus so much of my psychic power through this beacon that it will blast out into warp space and I will be your living compass, bro. And like, it just gets crazy. He makes all these like Primarchs, he makes like 20 dudes based on his own genetic samplings. He builds the template out of his own genes and then he makes little tweaks here and there. He adds in a little bit of a fucking dog on one of them and that's how you get Lehman Russ, the leader of the motherfucking Space Wolves. And then the Space Marines are based off of him and they fucking like drink his blood or whatever, something like that. Maybe that's the, a different one. But anyways, they have some kind of wolf in curse where they'll go all feral and crazy. Like, bro, it's nuts. And so then some of these, the... To make these to make these tools to fight the chaos gods, the emperor made a huge mistake. He made a deal with the eldritch power to get knowledge from them, and he initially had created the uh, the these like twenty super soldiers to be soldiers against the warp, and they would have been fine. But by using chaos magic in their creation, he gave the chaos gods a tiny little finger which they fucking used to tear the door wide open. So the Emperor's got all 20 of his special super soldiers that are going to take hundreds of years to grow into what he needs them to be. And the Chaos Gods are like, what? And they just fucking grab them and fling them across the fucking multiverse. Or the universe, I should say, right? Not the multiverse. And so now all of his guys are gone. And he's like, oh, and that's when he comes up with the Space Marines because he needs the dudes to get churned out quickly and then slowly over time he finds these missing children and he brings them into the fold right they have different purposes but some of them are fucking crazy now and so there's this whole traitor situation that goes down the horus heresy where the emperor gets struck down but here's the thing you need the emperor he has to be alive because he's the beacon remember he's the compass for warp space and if you can't have that compass you can't do interstellar travel anymore essentially shutting humanity out of interstellar travel you need the emperor alive so they had to keep him on the golden throne which is this insane life support system that like the emperor is a rotting corpse but because of his immortality he's still like there basically just a spirit locked in a rotted flesh cage skeleton but to keep him there they have to constantly feed psychic energy which requires the sacrifice of sometimes up to 10,000 psychic people in any given week. It fucking, it's crazy. It's crazy. And each of those 20 super soldier guys ended up on their own different planet with different stories behind them. One guy ends up on this crazy gladiator world. Turns out to be an epic gladiator. He gets this mentor guy. And then the day comes where he's got to fight his mentor. But he refuses. No, it won't fight my mentor. And that's when the elites are like, all right, bro, you know what? Fuck you. We're going to put this crazy electro device in your head that amplifies your rage and gives you endorphin rushes and like, oh, dopamine, but only when you're raging. So it basically clouds your mind and just makes you a rage maniac. So they put him back in the fight with his mentor. He slaughters his mentor. When he comes back to his senses, he screams for fucking three days straight, bro. Right? Because these guys are superhuman. They're stats. They can hold an animal over their head for seven days straight like nothing. So you've got this situation where now, now he's pissed, right? So slowly but surely, he basically, first of all, he tries to escape. Couldn't do it on his own. Then he realizes, I got to do it with everybody. Stages a massive gladi gladiator is like uh, rampage. They escape and turn into this like roaming army for a while, right? And then the elites of the world are like, we got to take him out. So they start bringing all these armies in to take him out. But the emperor has finally found his son. So he shows up in space and is like, what's up? I'm here to help you. But, but he's like, no, man, I'm here with my gladiators. I ain't ditching them. But the emperor goes, there's no way he's going to survive this. Beam him up to the ship, bro. So he gets beamed up to the ship, right? And so he watches as those armies destroy all of his gladiator followers, his entire fucking brotherhood. And he's asking the emperor, save them, save my people. And the emperor is like, you don't understand the size of my designs. These guys don't mean anything. And just waves it away like it's nothing, right? And so then this guy's just like, okay, I fucking hate you now. So it was pretty easy to get him to like be a traitor. And that's just what, that's just one of them. Like Warhammer 40k lore is pretty fucking cool right 
Sewer germ, do I have a video on it? No, but I did actually like one of the things I have contemplated is reorient reorienting Fantasy Geographic to other lore outside of magic because I have already done D&D lore there, a Genesis lore. So I have considered doing 40k lore over there. Scroll Keeper, thanks, buddy. You think I'm a good storyteller? I love stories. They're exciting. They're food. They're food for the imagination, and it's just it's it's a way to explore the nature of mankind when you have writers who are capable of doing so. Right? So, yeah, I love stories. I love lore. There's so much depth, so much to appreciate. So yeah, you hear that? Do you guys hear? Did, did I sound un unhappy at, at any point during that? Fucking magic lore can suck my dick, bro. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's fucking garbage. Weak ass bullshit garbage where no, nobody ever really has anything of consequence happen and nobody gets hurt, but we're supposed to feel like something epic happened when nothing happened. It's lazy and empty and pathetic and wretched and worthless. What are my thoughts about 40k orcs? I love the fact that 40k orcs super regenerate their teeth. So as a result, their entire currency system is based on fucking teeth. So it's like, well, yeah, I'm just going to knock your fucking teeth out and take them. That's how I make money. And you regenerate your teeth. Like the fact that teeth is teeth <laughs> treasure. That's great. The fact that they have their own basic psychic magic in that what they believe becomes reality, but in a ridiculous way, where because orcs believe that the vehicles they paint red go faster, they actually do. The overall psychic collective of the orcs has that property, and it also has the wah property, where you get more of them together, and they just automatically get more powerful, kind of the same way that, like, individual... Individual grasshoppers are grasshoppers, but if you get enough of them together, they're a locust swarm or whatever, and they act like they're on crack. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Uh, would I eat people to stay alive? Jess, absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. I would do what it takes to stay alive. And if that means I have to fucking eat you, I will. Actually, when I was in college, when I was in college, um, we had this exercise we had to do where it was like, okay, we have to prioritize. We're, we're going to be trapped on a desert island and we have to prioritize the items we're going to take in this emergency situation and uh, like treat this seriously. So I did. I argued with them like it was fucking life or death. And so I'm like, we need this fucking mirror. We need this fucking mirror. And they're just like, oh, this and this. I'm like, no, 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 listen. Mirror is number one, you fucking idiots. Like, you don't fucking get it. The mirror is how you signal for help. The only way we live is if people help us. We're not doing Robinson fucking Crusoe with the three of us, okay? I don't know which of you is going to be the wife, but we will die. Our chances of survival are to be found within a few days. To do that, we need a mirror, and we need to have the stuff to make a fire. We need a mirror, and we need to constantly be paying attention for when people are coming. And water, because we'll die without water. So the three items we take, the fire shit, water, and the mirror. And if you fucking disagree with me, fuck you, idiot. And so, like, I yelled at them. I yelled at them and yelled at them, and they agreed with me. And then we got top marks, because that's the shit you need. And then after we left, after we left, he's like, yeah, I just, I, I learned, I just learned a lot about Mike. It's like, the, he's like, because the teacher came by, he's like, he's really into it. And Buddy was like, he's like, he'd eat us. If he had to, I'm like, you're fucking right, I would. I wouldn't do it unless I had to, but I would. <laughs> so yeah, Warhammer 40k lore is a lot of fun. And when I'm having fun, people are down to do that with me, right? Like, I'm a good fucking time. I'm a good time, but I'm not having a good time with magic lore anymore. So I'm gonna have a good time with magic lore. And how I do that is go... Oh, I'm going fucking full on Denji. That's what I said to Carly. I'm going Chainsaw Man Denji. I want a little fucking video where my face is over Denji's face and Buddy getting kicked in the dick over and over and over is fucking Wizards of the Coast face because fuck them, bro. 
I'm just here to shit on Magic Lore now, for real, for real. Until Fantasy Geographic reopens, I'm here to shit in Magic's fucking mouth until they fix it. That's it. That's it. No love. No love. Elbow from the top rope over every single minor misstep. No fucking forgiveness. No benefit of the doubt. Fuck you every single way possible. That's my current mood. But Warhammer 40k lore, bro, that shit's dope, right? You got some fucking dude, his pod smashes into a fucking mountaintop. Boom! Explodes the top of the mountain. Shakes the world. And then the dude himself goes on to shake the world. He ends up fighting a Necron dragon. Necron dragons can't be harmed. What does he do? He lures it into a situation where he fucking melts it with magma. But unfortunately for him... Part of the Necron dragon when it's melting gets all over his arms. So now he has Necron metal fists, bro, which give him extra strength. But the problem is he views them as impure because the Necrons are fucking garbage and he's got this stuck on him, man. So people might admire the power of it, but he feels corrupted by it. Like, there's a bunch of cool shit. There's a bunch of cool shit. It's not like, hey, look at uh, Gary was here. And Bruce was here, and Danny was here, and so was Sven Morgan. But they all were wearing spinny beanies because we're in Humpty Land. The Humpty Land is your chance to fuck your game. Like, it's... It's terrible. Just terrible. So yeah, Warhammer 40k lore is crazy. It's crazy. Like, there's so many different things going on, right? You got the fucking Tyranids. They have these bio ships. They just like giant. It's they're living beings instead of spaceships, and they just fly up to a planet and go, "We got to convert all the biomass into goop and suck it up into me." And then they just send out their crazy like alien monsters that have fucking crazy regeneration powers and shit. Who comes to brood, mother bitch? Like, it's wild. It's wild. You got the fucking plague marines. Like, space marines that have been corrupted into the service of the plague god? Bro, that would suck. That would suck. Like, fucking at least with Slash, you're gonna get your dick sucked or something. You know what I mean? Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want me no fucking... I like the plague marines are amazing from a flavor concept. I used to have plague marine models and stuff. I sold all the Warhammer models and stuff I had because I needed money. But, uh... Uh, yeah, once upon a time, I had some really cool models. I also like from the non 40k side of things, um, the Ideneth Deepkin, the soul stealing elves. Their children are born with stunted or no, no souls, so they have to steal souls from other creatures. But the problem is, like regular level creatures' souls are jank, so you need like sentient humanoid souls to steal. That's crazy. The fucking level of conflict. This isn't we're here for treasure. This is like. Like, we've got to take you out because our children's lives and our species depends on it. Like, that is a high-level motivation that you can't unwind. You can't solve that. Like, really, very easily. Which makes for fantastic conflict in a war. Jungle, you like the Tau, eh? It's crazy. Uh, it's, I'm, I guess I remember more or know more about 40k than I thought because then I just started thinking about those crazy mobile walls and what well, the broadsides and all of it. Yeah. Oh, the giant, bro. The, um, what are they called? What are the big, big ones called? I love those. The knights, the big, fat, like knight titans or whatever. Oh, those things are so cool. <laughs> What about World of Warcraft? Is there any good? I have no idea. Literally no clue. No clue. So yeah, man. Like 40k lore. That The stuff that I've been reading has been really interesting. It could be that this lore is from forever ago. And their new lore is garbage. I have no idea. But I've plumbed most of the depths of Magic's lore. And they're not making any good new offerings. So...
Melmaster, you playing Rogue Trader? Oh, yeah, that was like the precursor to Warhammer 40k. So, yeah, there's definitely other, other areas for lore, but for now, I'm just putting a pause on the channel. I'm not interested in just swapping something else out automatically, you know? It's good for now. It's good. I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it for a bit and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> it would be funny to do 40k lore just cuz I uh, I don't know nearly as much about it. So I'm sure there'd be people coming in, you don't know what you're talking about cuz people say that to me about magic lore when I do know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> You don't know. I'm like, I don't fucking care. Did I not tell your fucking make-believe story the exact right way? Suck a dick. <laughs> Rogue Trader is the name of a new one. Oh, oh, as well. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. What up, Thompson? Sleeving up. Uh, Arkham Horror. Cool. Lord of the Rings lore. I like Lord of the Rings, but I, I, no, I don't really have any interest in talking about that in videos. Not at this time, at least. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. The Thunder Junction stuff is just so dismally bad that it's infuriating to even work on it. Like for real, when I was when 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 I started reading it, I'm like, you know what? I can't. I can't. This makes no fucking sense. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. So poorly written. Zircon Wheel of Time lore. Okay, but I'll do it on the show. I'll I'll do it on the actual the new show. <laughs> oh, I've heard people are enjoying that so good for them i mean they made multiple seasons so people had to be enjoying it there are people who just like seeing wheel of time even if it is this awful version of it i tried i tried couldn't even make it through the second episode it's too hard man it's too hard Eric, you made sure to go back and watch the old Brothers War videos to better understand the current Brothers War set and find yourself hugely disappointed with what they made later. You and me both. Honestly, I, I felt like I got robbed by the Urza lore and then Magic 30 coming out really dampened my excitement for Magic overall. So it was a one-two punch that I did not appreciate. My Little Pony lore is more deep than Thunder Junction? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. fucking -lutely. Hunter, you're almost glad we never got the magic show? Well, yeah, I mean, unless Wizards left the story in somebody else's hand altogether, we weren't going to get anything good. What up, Luke? How you doing? Yeah, I, I really liked the Wheel of Time books, but the show was just intolerably, intolerably bad. Like... Like, what what the Wheel of Time did makes what Wizards did with their pandering look fucking tame by comparison. You know? Ridiculous. You guys, could you hear that? They're like... Arr. My gut is angry, man. I guess the rage is, is, is visceral now. <laughs> Got it. I don't know. I have no idea if the Netflix show has been axed. I have no clue what Wizards' plans are. Maybe they'll roll out a, an AI an AI show. Oh, all right. All right. I'm going to get going. Thanks for coming and hanging out, my friends. This stream will be put up on the live stream archive afterwards. So if you want to uh, check it out, you can do that. And yeah. I'll have my video uh, pause in Fantasy Geographic coming out tomorrow. So, thanks for coming and hanging out. See you later.